I'm Tony Gugliotta at the Bell Centre in Montreal for Game 4 between the Canadians and Bruins. We'll have full highlights and reaction coming up later in sports. The Janus Act shot gives Vermont a five-point lead going into halftime. More importantly, it gives them a shot of confidence as they are now perhaps just 20 minutes away from an NCAA tournament berth. Game. There's been a steady stream of fans in and out of the ballpark all day. Many wearing this t-shirt to mark the occasion. It reads, proud supporter of UVM baseball from 1888 to this year, 2009, illustrating the 112-year history of the program. And if we stop the play right here, you're going to see three Bruins defenders covering two Montreal point men, where three Montreal forwards are down low. The Vermont men are preparing to take on UMBC tonight. We'll talk with head coach Mike Lonergan next. They were the only team in the nation to beat Boston University twice this season, but can they do it one more time? For many of these boxers, this event marks the start of a young career, like Bobby Joe LeClaire of Berlin, New Hampshire, who is fighting in just his second ever about. This weekend was all about Dartmouth domination. The Big Green's depth allowing them to take the team title. Welcome back. There's nothing like hitting the high banks with a loved one. And today, the perfect chance to do that, a special Father's Day of racing at Thunder Road. The late models going 50 laps in their main event, and Tony Andrews making it look easy. The number one Army ROTC car dominating. Andrews starting on the pole, and by lap 25, he is cruising, leading Grant Folsom in the 81 and Brooks Clark in the 68. But with six laps to go, Clark getting in some trouble. This view coming from his in-car camera. He gets caught up in an oil spill coming around turn four. The 68 goes around and around, ending his hopes of a first career victory. When we resume, Andrews continues to cruise. He'll take the wire-to-wire -wire win. Phil Scott comes in second. Grant Folsom runs third. Well, I had an awesome car for, you know, 44 laps until he blew the oil line here in four. And... Boy, the top was better after that. I just couldn't go up there. I had to protect the bottom. And I knew with Phil and Grant and those guys, they're great to race with. So just let's race it out and see who finishes where. Tony Andrews clutching that trophy for dear life. Congratulations. Meanwhile, the Vermont Lake Monsters complete their season opening series this afternoon with a rubber match against the Lowell Spinners. What a great way to spend Father's Day and to be at the ballpark with your children. Many dads enjoying that privilege at Centennial Field this afternoon. Good game, too. Vermont jumps on top in the second inning. Cole Leonido with a grounder to the third. The throw by Lowell's Colburn Vitek is in the dirt. It can't be scooped. Wade Moore comes around to score with a great slide. one nothing. Monsters. Starting pitcher Matt Swinenberg with a tremendous outing for Vermont. He goes five full innings, giving up just one hit and striking out three. Some insurance coming in the sixth. Jason Martinson on second for the Monsters. David Friedas rips one into center field. Martinson will score. The Monsters jump on top. Two to nothing. A well-pitched game all around, but the good guys come out on top today. Vermont takes two of three on the series and wins three to one. They welcome the New York Penn League's newest team, the Connecticut Tigers. Tigers into town for a two-game set starting tomorrow. The Boston Red Sox are looking to sweep the NL West leading Dodgers right out of Boston tonight. And this one got a late start at 8.05. Right now, the Sox lead 2-0 in the ninth inning. We'll have much more from this game tomorrow morning starting at 5 o'clock. The Yankees and Mets playing in the Bronx for the rubber game of the Subway Series. Third inning. Bases loaded for Mark Teixeira. That's a shot to left off Johan Santana. It's off the top of the wall and gone for a grand slam. The 12th of the year for Tex. Yankees lead 4-0 nothing. And that's all CC Sabathia needs. He scatters four hits in eight full innings while striking out six. The Yanks are in first place all alone after a Tampa Bay loss today, winning four to nothing. We hit the diamond for this week's edition of the top three on three. At number three, Division II State Championship Baseball. Burr and Burton's Danny Favreau with a great diving play to get the runner at first. At number two, two big flies in Division Three and Four. First, Dan Smith of Blue Mountain goes the opposite way for a solo shot to help lead the Bucks to a D4 state title. Then, Tyler Russell of Leland and Gray with a mammoth home run to cap off a monster game and another D3 crown for the Rebels. 
And at number one, back to Division Two for the rarest of feats. Mount Abe's Ethan Heffernan drops down the bunt as Sam Lieberman scores in the bottom of the ninth for a walk-off suicide squeeze, a Division Two state championship, and most importantly, the top spot in this week's top three on three. Yeah, the walk-off, game-winning, championship-winning, title-raising bunt. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I, that's a brave play to call. I've yeah. never seen that. It, it is. got to give it the top spot. If Definitely. they're going to call it, you got to give it to them. And they executed it to perfection. Well-deserved. Most deserved. All right, thanks so much, Tony. <laughs> Imagine this. It's a beautiful spring afternoon in Vermont, and you're taking a nice, leisurely jog down a wooded trail. Now imagine coming face to face with a joust wielding gladiator who would like nothing more than to make your day a lot less enjoyable. <laughs> this is only one of the many obstacles that became a reality and ran over 450 athletes ragged in the first ever Spartan race held at Williston's Catamount Outdoor Center over the weekend. I have to tell you, I am so impressed with the turnout. Uh, it's just amazing day. The amazingly unique race course offers competitors a variety of challenges, testing their endurance and their resilience under the most extreme conditions. This thing hits you from like every other direction. It's, I mean, swimming and running and biking, you can kind of peg where your workout's gonna hit you. This is just like full body, like brutalization. I think we almost drowned in the first <laughs> quarter of a mile of it, so it was a nice way to start off the race. It's all about that old on a course like this, it's really pick your own poison, whether it's trying to scale a 12 foot high Crisco covered slippery wall or slopping their way across a mud soaked pond. These athletes are challenged by any number of extreme elements comprising this trail. I didn't expect going underwater. I was kind of surprised about hitting the water. I got kicked in the head a few times trying to get across, but <laughs> that, yeah, it was probably the most challenging part. The toughest part for me was all the all the running around in the mud. Definitely the pond. It was really deep. It was really cold. Though the athletes differ in their opinions on what's the most difficult barrier to overcome, they share one universal feeling, a sense of accomplishment unmatched by any other physical conquest. Well, when I looked online, I saw a few that I didn't think I'd make it, and I, I actually did them, and I feel really good about it. And I did it twice. To me, this is like recess for adults. Um, it's way better than a... I really enjoyed it much better than a, a 5K race because there's, there's all these challenges just keep me on your toes and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun getting to do something different. Whatever background you're from, whether you're an athlete, whether uh, you're a mother, whatever your background is, you can do Spartan Race. She outran me for sure, but it was great knowing she was at the end waiting. and uh... I cheered her on when she was finishing, so it was worth it. She's tough. Tough enough to forever call herself a Spartan. Tony Gugliotta, Channel 3 Spotlight on Sports. The Copley Country Club in Morrisville is acting as a time machine this weekend. It's just going way back, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're looking like the 20s and we're playing like the 20s, uh, you know, um, this is the way it was. A group of golf enthusiasts are participating in the second annual Vermont Hickory Open with the goal of linking the past to the present. If you like history, if you like golf and those two come together, it's a lot of fun to come out and play. This is the second straight year the tournament has been held on the fairways and greens of Copley. What an easy game this is, man. Nice par. 20 golfers from as close as Elmore to as far away as Arkansas pulled out 1920s style hickory clubs and dressed to the nines to ensure authenticity to its highest degree. I've gone to Scotland and England. I played a lot of golf in the area. And what happens when you play with hickories is that you get back to nature. You get back to the real origins of the game. More admiration than anything to see, see how hard it is to actually play the game um, at the turn of the century. I wouldn't want to go on my home course dressed like this, honestly, um, unless I'm playing with my hickories because they would, you know, who is that, what are you doing type of thing, yeah. Now that I look the part in my old school wardrobe, I'm going to test these guys on their knowledge of the origin of this great game. We've heard of a niblick before. Do you know what a niblick is? Yeah, I, I, it, places, it replaces sand wedge, really. I think uh, it's nine iron for the most part. Sure. What's a spoon? A spoon is a, a two wood. Right, you got that right. That's very, that's very good. What's a cleek? Uh, a cleek. 
I don't know what a cleek is. We've stumped you. Yes. It's a it's a two iron or a driving iron. Aye, okay. Okay, so some of these guys know their stuff. That's because most of them, like Chris Gilgan of Uxbridge, Massachusetts, are collectors and use tournaments like this as a way to enjoy their hobby. Once you collect something, you really like using it. We can take the clubs and go to the battlefield that Bobby Jones was on and play the same battle that he played. And to be wearing appropriate clothes just brings it all together. You start feeling the magical, mystical nature of golf and how things uniquely happen on a golf course. For this unique set of players, the magic and mystique lie in a weekend-long journey into the past. In Morrisville, Tony Gugliotta, Channel 3 Sports. It's Christmas time again, and that means another musical trip down memory lane in the only way the Channel 3 Sports Department can bring it to you. Enjoy. On the first day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me a touchdown by Max the Brizzy. On the second day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me two talented goalies and a touchdown by Max the Brizzy. On the third day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me three Canadian starters, two talented goalies, and a touchdown by Max the Brizzy. On the fourth day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me four stars at T Road, three northern natives, two netminders, and a touchdown by Max the Brizzy. On the fifth day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me five. Time golfers, four stars at Key Road, three Maple Leafs, Menor, and Spillane, and a touchdown by Max Labrizzi. On the sixth day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me six Norwich Climbings, five old time golfers. The king comes to bury old Canadians, two crease chiefs, and a touchdown by Max Labrizzi. On the seventh day of Christmas, my sports guy gave to me a seven-year-old sniper, six cadet trophies, five old-time golfers, four left turns, three Knook Kagers, Park stops here, and a touchdown by Max the Brizzy. On the eighth day of Christmas, my sports guy gave to me eight years in Essex, seven-year-old sniper, six shootout titles, five. Time golfers. Nescar meets Vermont, three Ontarians, a shootout spy Spillane, and a touchdown by Max the Brizzy. On the ninth day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me nine lightning races, eight wiffle bothers, Colton Tricks, Thomas Norwich on a roll, five old time golfers. Smoke eats up the track, three hoop stars, Rob rules the net, and a touchdown by Max Labrizzi. On the tenth day of Christmas, my sports guy gave to me a ten-game road trip, nine sailing showdowns, eight at Little Fanway, cooling lights the lamp, six times the prime link, five old time golfers, four racing legends, Courtney May and Kendra, two masked men, and a by Max On the eleventh day of Christmas, my sports guy gave to me eleven liquor wins, ten on the road, nine in the water, eight on the diamond, seven year old sniper, six trophy raises, five old time golfers. The racers climb on in, the ladies hit the floor, goalies rule the game, and a touchdown by Max Labrizzi. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my sports car gave to me twelve jumping horses, eleven for Colchester, ten awesome bus trips, racing on Champlain, Travis Roar's a hero, he's just seven, six northern shootouts, five old-time golfers, four NASCAR stars, oh Canada, two between the pipes, and a touchdown by Max LeBrizzi. Got to give credit to the vocal stylings of A. Lewis Gordon on that one. Happy holidays. That's sports.